Hello there, Retro Marky here. Now I thought I'd make a quick video on something on the Spectrum, and uh, it's quite interesting. It's called Make a Chip. I just discovered this recently, and uh, it's kind of a program for learning about basic logic and electronics and computers. So let's have a look. So let's just get this on screen a bit better. There. The first part of the program tells you about circuit design. The second part shows you some examples. And the third part lets you experiment and design circuits. Uh, so what we're going to do is start off with learn, part one. Computer hardware is essentially quite simple and can be thought of as five connecting elements. These elements can be made from just one type of electronic circuit. The complex part of the computer being how these circuits are joined together. This is fascinating. Input, memory, control, process and output. Process is a way of saying work. The computer will work with the information held in its memory or the information that you have input. There must be an output so the computer can tell you what it has worked out. The control looks after what the computer is doing. Information is represented in computers as ones and zeros, which is binary. Electric signals are either high or low. A signal high normally represents a one, and a low represents a zero. A binary digit is called a bit, and eight bits are referred to as a byte. Electronic circuits contain transistors. Common arrangements of transistors are represented symbolically by logic elements or gates in circuit diagrams. There are three basic logic elements. They are called AND, OR and NOT. Consider a car with a reversing light. For the reversing light to be on, the reversing light switch must be on whilst the ignition is on. In logic circuits we can say the light will be on when the ignition is on and the reversing light switch is on. Make sense? Here we go. So here we've got the ignition switch and reversing light switch and this is an AND gate so we need a 1 and a 1 to make a 1 here which would be ignition and reversing light equals reverse light the symbol on the screen is called an AND gate and is how we represent a logic AND in circuit diagrams the circuit will put the light on or output on if both inputs are set to ON We will put a light to each of the inputs and outputs to see what happens when different logical values are input. We will record the input and output combinations in a truth table as shown next. So there we go. If off and off, light off. If off and on, light off. If on and off, off. So we need on and on for logic on. A truth table usually has 1 and 0 instead of on and off. So we could say 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1 makes 1. Green means the light is on, red means the light is off, flashing black means the light is waiting to be set. So now we get to do something, set the inputs to the AND gate to see what values turn the reversing light on. The computer will fill in a row in the truth table for each set of inputs you try. Press 1 for on. So if we do a 1 here and a 0, we get nothing. Because we need a 1 and a 1. And the truth table, 1, 1, 0, 0 equals 0. So if we now do 1 and 1, you can see the light comes on. Because that's a 1. So 1 and 0, 0, 1 and 1, output 1. If we do a 0 and a 0, obviously we still get nothing. And if we do a 0 and a 1, we get also nothing here. So that's our AND gate. Another type of gate is called an OR gate. So we've got 1 or 0, or 0 or 1. We could use an OR gate for, for a light which has two switches. The light would be on if either switch 1 or switch 2 is on. Isn't this fascinating? We'll do a 1 
and zero. The light is on. We do a zero and a one. The light is also on. We do a zero and a zero. The light will be off. And if we do a one and a one, the light is also on because it's it's or so it's one or the other and in this case one of them's on. Uh, there's an exclusive or called XOR by the way uh, where it has to be either one or the other not both. So here we have an, uh, a gate with only one input the output is always the opposite this is a NOT gate so if that's one that will be zero and if that's zero that will be a one And so it goes on with NAND gates and NOR gates, which are negative and negative OR. So I won't go through the whole thing with you, but I just wanted to show you something that was um, not just retro and old, but still useful today. This is actually a really nice way of looking at basic computer operation and logic and understanding truth tables and how the gates work. And this is really the fundamentals of your computer. And we're back with part two. So now we're going to go to examples. In the first part of the program, you learned about gates, what they are called, and under what conditions they are on or off. In this part of the program, we shall seek how to join gates to make circuits and what feedback is. The third part of the program is where you design your own circuits. Very exciting. Mm -hmm. When we draw logic gates across the screen, we work out their function from left to right. The computer works out every column of gates in one very small interval of time. In the first part, we learnt that a NAND gate is really an AND gate followed by a NOT gate. The above circuit shows two outputs, one from a NAND gate, the other from a sequence of gates. That's these here. And there's our truth table. Watch what happens to the output of each gate for each set of input values. Note how the same values occur at both outputs. So we've got 0 and 0 in, 0 here, and 1. This little circle here means it's a NOT AND, a NAND. And, and then we've got an output of 1 and 1. Watch what happens to the output of each gate for each set of input values. Note how the same values occur at both outputs 1 and 1. So basically this NAND gate is performing the same as an AND gate with a, um, a NOT. So 1 and a 0, you get a 0 and a 1, 0, 1 and 1. Here at 0, 1, we get 1 and 1, and here's the truth table. And 1 and 1, we get a 0 and 0. Now we will see that a NOR gate is, re is really the same as an OR gate and a NOT gate in series. So again, we've got an OR gate with a NOT. 0 and 0, we get 0, gets reversed into 1, 0 here we get a 1 and a 1 here. And so forth. Next look what happens to the NAND gate when both inputs are the same. So 0, 0 and 1, 0, 1 and 1. Do you recognise the pattern of the truth table? The output is equivalent to the output from a NOT gate. So we can make NOT gates from NAND gates and also we can make AND gates. NAND then a NOT gate makes sense. Two negatives make a positive. Part 1 we said all gates can be made from a combination of NAND gates. We shall now see how we can make an OR gate. Watch what happens with various sets of inputs again. So 
here is showing the truth table again. We're now going to find out about feedback. Feedback is a means of modifying the input to one gate as a result of a previous output from another gate, each gate being set during a time cycle. To explain this, think of adding two numbers. 5 plus 3 is 8. That was very easy. Fifteen five plus eight is three carry one. Oh, oh oops. Anyway, in each cycle of our adding machine we add two values and the carry, which is the feedback from the previous cycle. Okie dokie. Another example of a circuit with feedback is a bistable. These can be used for registers and store in computers. They can hold for, an, for another cycle the previous output of a gate. Here we've got P, S, R and Q. This circuit is a set slash reset by stable. When input S is set, the output Q is set on and is fed back as signal P for the next cycle. So when this is set to 1, that will become 1 and go back to here for P. Further cycles will leave Q on until the input arm is set, at which time Q is reset to 0 and fed back as P. This will continue until S is set again. S and R can't both be set together, but assume in the truth table that such situation set Q to 0. There's our truth table. And it's showing it here. This is a funky, great little program. It shows even a machine from 1982 can still be used to educate. And there's something charming about doing this on an 8 bit machine. So I'll just go through this quickly. In this section, we have seen how to make a circuit from gates. In reality, you would do this with transistors chips, bits of wire and solder. We've also seen how all the gates can be constructed by combining just one type of gate. Lastly, we have looked at how we can make storage by using feedback. Alright, on to part three. Part three. In this part you can experiment with the gates and try to create your own circuit. You may use any of the gates and or not nor and nand. You have a command copy which will copy your circuit to the ZX printer if it is connected. Or you have one. A command out allows you to set up to four outputs. Stop will stop the design part. I will then check the circuit is valid and will work out the output for any input combination you select. Have fun! Right, so here we go in and our gates and an output. To move the cursors use keys 5 to 8, which is the cursor keys. When you press enter, you'll be able to specify the type of gate. So, okay. Type stop to stop design, copy to print, new to start again, or and. So let's put and. There's our and gate. So we've got an input with two possibilities. Select where the inputs to this gate come from. Position the cursor where the input is from or at one of the outputs if you're unsure. Let's see what happens if I just put that there. Select the next input. Hmm. Oh. Seems to have crashed. Well, anyway, that's pretty much most of the program. Uh, obviously, it would be better for you to delve around yourself if you're interested in learning these basics. Um, 
just a nice little nice little package for the spectrum which is educational and still relevant to this day okay well thank you for watching retro Markey, out